Can you see me and hear me clearly? Yeah. Awesome, great. So let's begin today's class. Sit comfortably wherever you're sitting. Just sit straight and comfortably. And whenever you feel ready, gently close your eyes. Start watching your breath, just the natural flow of your breathing as you are inhaling and as you are exhaling. Slowly shift your attention to your body. Just be in your posture and align your body correctly. Take a few moments to observe the body. And slowly come back to the breath. Begin to deepen the breathing. Allow your breath to become slow, long and deep. Relax the mind and prepare yourselves for Om chanting and then we'll chant the mantra. Inhale deeply for Om. Let's begin with the chanting. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niram 
सर्वे भद्रा पश्य कश्चिदुखे इनहेल डीपली फॉर शांति 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 Feel the vibrations of the mantra. Join your palms together and drop the palms together. Place them on your eyes. Very slowly while blinking and looking at your palms, begin to open up your eyes. Start coming back with a smile. And namaste to everyone. Let us begin today's class. <clears throat> so yesterday we were talking about Patanjali and we heard a lot of stories. Yeah. Today we are just going to uh, complete the topic. Right. So, <clears throat> Patanjali Yoga Sutras, right? And author is Maharishi Patanjali. M A H A. R I S H I Maharishi Patanjali P A T A N J A L I. If you just read the sutras, the book will be very thin, right? And only two three pages because one ninety five sutras are like nothing. It's like one hundred and ninety five sentences written, right? So very very short text. but again as i told you it's in coded language so you will find this this thick uh, a book also with a commentary because everybody is trying to understand and break down what he said like you know um the uh, einstein and uh, newton whatever they gave you know we are still trying to understand those things right about science right so they gave certain formulas and All, all those things they came to basically a conclusion and they gave a final statement, right? But we are disintegrating those things till now. You know, some of the theorems are still not proven, right? So, um, same thing is happening with the Yoga Sutras also. He said something, and everybody is just you know uh, breaking it down and trying to understand that thing till date. right so uh, as i told you there are four chapters in the text right so um, and uh, he calls the chapters uh, pad p a d a so each like this is the term he has used for each like chapter right so like yesterday i was telling you you know he began the text with um the first chapter and he said from now you have to like begin on this path right so a uh, first chapter is actually called the samadhi path
ओके समाधि एस ए एम ए डी एच आई समाधि पाद पी ए डी ए एंड दिस वन हैज फिफ्टी वन वर्सेस So one ninety five, I've broken down into four chapters. First chapter has fifty one of the one ninety five, right? And as you know, like if you know anything about the eight limbs of yoga, you would have seen that the last limb is called samadhi, right? The last um, uh, limb in the eight fold path that he has given that is the samadhi, right? Absorption. This word means absorption, right? So he named the first chapter this. Why? Again, because he has, as I told you, you know, he provided first the advanced level, like whatever the advanced level student, all the information that he needed, he provided that information, right? So the first chapter is called Samadhi Path, right? And um, uh, this chapter, you know, has concepts like. Uh, the definition of yoga right the concept of pranav or om om meditation also when you will do so uh, um you know your teacher will refer back to this text only right so om has been discussed then the obstacles that you will face on your path we will also discuss those what are the obstacles you guys will face right so the that thing is discussed in this chapter then how do you come out of those obstacles that is discussed in the first chapter right and um uh, you know uh, this absorption state right this also has different stages right like um, um you cross a particular mark and then you have certain levels in a video game right so it's something like that so when you reach this absorption state so this is not the end okay a particular uh, form of this absorption is the final stage okay so before that also other stages will come in between so he has described all those stages right that you might reach till this level and then again you might come back right and then you might reach to this this level then there is also a possibility that you come back and then he gives you know few levels from which there is no coming back right so he has broken this entire concept of absorption also in various parts right so um the entire first chapter is discussing upon these things right so advanced level student can just read the first chapter and begin their practice right uh, one more thing so like yesterday i told you there are 195 uh, verses so in some places you will find that uh, 196 and in fact in majority of the places you will find 196 verses are given right in the original text 195 verses were given and then one verse was broken down into two when somebody was giving a commentary right so that person broke that verse down into two right and since then everybody after that you know um uh commented on that verse as like two verses right so first part and second part right so most places you will find 196 verses even if you google it right now you will find 196 and the only reason is one verse was broken down into two there is no need to get confused because sometimes it does like you know there are multiple sources of information so we get end up getting confused right so there are 195 in total but 196 is also fine right then he comes to the uh, second uh, uh, chapter so this chapter is very very relevant for you guys right most of the things you will study you will study from this chapter only right so um the second chapter is called sadhana s a d h a n a sadhana path right sadhana is discipline right so where he has elaborated more on this 
discipline right and how you have to follow it right so first he when the chapter begins he talks of the um uh you know practice for the intermediate level student and he has called that practice kriya yoga k r i y a kriya yoga y o g a right this is the practice for an intermediate level student so you have been practicing for a while but then you are not at that advanced student stage also somewhere in between right so this is the practice that he gave and we will talk of it in detail also but three things are coming under this so i will just name them so you guys can just write this down okay mm. so tapas swadhyay and ishwar pranidhan these are the three practices he gave under kriya yoga right again these are qualities even though these are practices but you are already you have already chosen the practice for yourself and now these qualities you add into your practice so tapas t a p a s this word means austerity austerity also but this term literally means um heat right when you practice so something so much right heat is generated right so i will explain properly what the meaning is right what you can write austerity for now then we have swadhyay s v a d h a y a swadhyay and this term means um your introspection okay self introspection you can say and then the third one is the ishwar pranidhan right i s h w a r ishwar and pranidhan p r a n i d h a n ishwar pranidhan which means surrender to god okay one is austerity then second one is introspection and third one is surrender to god right and then then he moves on to talk about the beginner level students so that is why this chapter is very relevant for us right because we are going to get to know about all the levels of student but the main one because we are beginners this will be the most easily applicable for you okay so the eight fold path that has been mentioned that starts in this chapter okay ashtanga a s h t a n g a so this is the asht means eight and ang means limbs so eight limbs of yoga and you um, would have heard of this before also and one of your practices practical classes is ashtang yoga only right so uh, there also eventually it's leading you over here only even though it is intense asana practice it is leading you over here only right so um the first five uh, 
uh, limbs are mentioned in the second chapter. So not everything is mentioned in the second chapter. The first five are mentioned in the second chapter. That is why in a lot of places you will see, they say the first five are actually external limbs or external practices. And the remaining three are mentioned in the next chapter. So in a lot of places you will see that first five limbs are called the external limbs and the last three limbs are called the internal limbs. And because the first five are given in second chapter, and remaining three are given in the next chapter. Even though your fifth limb is actually a bridge between the external practices and the internal practices, one practice is a bridging practice, right? Where you withdraw and move inwards, right? And in some places you will also find first four are internal and next four, sorry, first four are external and next four are internal. So it, de it depends how somebody is interpreting it, right? So I'll just write down the eight limbs because uh, in future classes, we will discuss them. So you should have the names. First one is Yama. Y-A-M-E. -E. This is how you conduct yourself with regard to your external world, right? The society, how your interaction should be with the external world. Then this we discussed uh, in a previous class also, Niyamas. N I Y A M A. So, this is talking about what? How you conduct your own self, right? How you are managing your own self. What is the relationship you have with yourself? What is the correct way of conducting yourself? not with regard to anybody else, right? I will explain all of them in a lot of detail in future classes, right? Then ask me. This asana part, you know, this is posture basically. E S E N E. Right? Out of all, this one is very famous. Right? Then pranayam. P R A N A Y A M A. This, these classes you have with me only, so we are already discussing in depth, you know. But Patanjali, what he said, I explained that in the beginning also. And when we talk in philosophy, I will again explain what he is trying to say over here. Right then, Pratyahar. P-R-A-T-Y-A-H-A-R-T. -E. Pratyahar. This means <clears throat> withdrawing the senses, right? So I was talking about this bridge. So this is that bridge, basically. If I need to go from here till there, right? And there is 
a river in between i will need a bridge right just to cross right so this this portion acts as that then you have your dharna d h e r a n e this is where the internal work you know begins before that you are working with um your body your uh, breathing right uh you your mind is engaged in these things but from uh, when you withdraw after that you just choose one object right and the entire process is about that only this you would have done in your meditation class also a little bit right this is concentration so now i have chosen some object right and i'm concentrating on that which naturally turns into meditation right dhyan d h y a n e so automatically without any effort all of that concentration is requiring so much effort you put in so much effort and then it there comes a point where it becomes effortless right so that effortless point is what meditation is and where are you headed towards samadhi again s a m a d h i we are headed towards the absorption right and i will explain what absorption is in detail again when we do the eight limbs right this term absorption what it means and you know how we can understand it so till pratyahar that is your second chapter and then from dharna your third chapter begins right then we move to the third chapter which is called vibhuti pad v i b h o o t i vibhuti pad p a d a now this this vibhuti word this means psychic powers okay this is very fascinating no whenever we listen to this term you know uh, psychic powers it's really um, it really grips the mind right so like this term is more fascinating than asana the term asana so most of us you know we like jumping around standing on the head standing on the hands like right? that is that is quite appealing in itself but this this term right the psychic powers this is much more appealing than standing on your head right so <clears throat> you know like uh, uh a lot of people since harry potter came out right a lot of people were immediately hooked 
to Harry Potter, right? Why? Because magic, right? And magic in what sense? They could do things which we cannot. If I say a particular like spell, right? And I want something to come to me, right? So in Harry Potter, you would have seen they use certain spells and things come flying to them, right? Or they can fly, right? And it is very fascinating for the mind, right? Because when you observe everything around you, you scientifically know you cannot fly, right? Our body weight is such, we don't have wings, right? So then when we see such things, it really, you know, grips the mind. Harry Potter got famous around the world, right? And uh, this is where you will most likely get stuck, not doing asanas, but most people, you know, they get stuck in this thing where they just said, we will get this psychic power, right? Or that psychic power. Like, you know, in the West, the concept of Kundalini Shakti, right? So serpent uh, energy, right? That is in our body, right? Uh, that is really famous, right? In a lot of places you will find Kundalini Yoga, right? And you go, you're fascinated. Wow, what are they going to make us do, right? So this is where your mind begins to get stuck, right? And uh, it's like if I uh, go from here till my home, I'm bound to pass some places. So these psychic powers are bound to come because you have set your goal that you want to be free from all of your sufferings, right? And on that way, on that route where you are right now and on the journey to being free, the psychic powers are bound to come on the way, right? So what happens is people get stuck over here, right? So in this chapter, he has explained what kind of psychic abilities you can get, right? And then he has discussed how important it is to just see them as a byproduct of uh, the process that you are doing. You are not doing the process for them, right? So, you know, a lot of places or, and a lot of people get stuck over here saying that we are doing this practice to achieve this ability, right? Or this will, we will work towards this. So no, your goal is to work towards freeing yourself. Who doesn't want to be free, right? So freeing yourself from all the sufferings. But the human mind is such, it is so fascinating, right? If I can fly or if I can like... Um, um, you know, uh, walk on water, you know. So the all these things, first let me tell you, all these things can happen. First thing is that it is not um, something out like which cannot happen, right? So the stories that you hear, right? Those are all true, right? People could walk on water or, you know, uh, um, have telepathic communication, right? You know, um, earlier there were no mobile phones. People used to communicate just like that, right? So all of these things can happen. But if you just get stuck over there, again, you will forget your aim and you will again go into the process of, um, you know, reacting to them, right? So if you, if you get psychic power, suppose you get psychic power. So two things can happen. One, you can proceed on your journey like you are, right? And other thing that will happen, like with most of us, right? We start showing off. So you will see a lot of yogis, they uh, reach till this stage and they begin to show off their abilities. So they have forgotten what they started their journey for, right? Most of the yogis who are working towards their final goal, you will even know them, right? They will be lost somewhere else only. Nobody will know them. Why? Because, yes, these psychic abilities you can get, right? But then after a while, you, our mind is such that we start abusing them, right? So you will go against the law of nature, right? In order to just show that you can do something, right? Which is not correct. You should not go against the laws of nature nature right because you will bear the consequences of that thing and then again you are going into reactivity right so reach this stage it's bound to come it's like sugar getting processed right 
till it re reaches its final stage some by products are bound to come so you know some people they do meditation for uh, anger management so these are not goals right these are by products if you do a process you you will observe yourself lead that you will realize why you are getting angry right and when you experience that thing that what is happening to you when you are getting angry right have you ever observed yourself when you get angry your respiration changes right your heart starts beating fast right you uh, be right who wants that who wants these health issues right so when you just closely observe what is happening to you right i told you no nature doesn't wait it will punish you immediately if you get angry you are the first one getting punished right so what happens is when people actually sit and look at what is happening to their body when something is happening of course the anger in itself you know it starts getting more controlled right why because now they know what is happening to their body right so little little things won't bother them too much now you guys are doing meditation after one month you know earlier maybe something used to trigger you a lot and now you will just roam around like that only pass that place by and everybody in your house will look at you and be like she was supposed to get angry or he was supposed to get angry at this but they didn't why because now you're just saying okay you know it's not that bothersome so this only comes when you go through that process but this is a by product of your practices not the final end right so psychic powers are bound to come right but they are not the end as long as this awareness remains you guys will go very fast and go till really far in your journey right but if you get stuck over here it's like a toy so these psychic abilities are like a toy you know when you give a little kid a toy and no matter what they are doing when they see that colorful toy you know they run towards it they play with that right so we are those kids right and these psychic abilities are those colorful toys they really fascinate us right because it is we think it is something extraordinary right there is nothing extraordinary these are ordinary things only you have just cleaned yourself enough you have just come out of the impurities of the mind so much that you are coming closer to who you are actually right now we are very distant we are connected over zoom call but our own connection with ourselves is very blurry right and there is so much disconnection right very rarely you connect with yourself right so that connection when you start cleansing yourself these processes those things are bound to come right that is your intrinsic nature right but you don't have to get stuck there right so he really emphasizes by the end of the chapter don't keep your mind just stuck over there right so last chapter is called your kevalya pad k a i v a l y kevalya pad p a d -A. this one has 34 verses if you add up 51 plus 55 plus 55 plus 34 it is 195 so this term kevalya this actually uh, means is derived from the root word keval keval means k e v a l keval isolation right isolation so this is this is the final like i told you you know right now you will not leave everything behind leave your homes 
and then practice yoga, right? This is one of the last stages when the yogi has to separate from everybody, get separated from everybody else, the society, I mean, right? And then the final point is achieved. So final goal, that is why Patanjali ji has called the final point Kevalli. Because this point can only be achieved in isolation, right? So Samadhi, yes, it is the last limb. But I, as I told you, there are stages of Samadhi, right? So in those particular stages, the last point is Kevalli. This is the one you are aiming for, actually, right? This is the point right and uh, you know this has been seen in a lot of stories as well you read the stories of all the yogis right when they uh, go for the final like they are about to reach the final goal they get separated like Siddharth Gautam famously known as Buddha right so he you know first he left his home right but when he left he had five more people, five of his friends and he. So these six people, they were doing meditation together. They went in isolation together, right? So they were separated from the society, but then they were meditating in the same uh, area, right? And uh, doing the same practices like you guys when you join the Zoom call. So you are like-minded people, no? Right? If you go and talk about these things to some of your friends, they will say, you have gone crazy, right? I told you this before also, right? But over here, you have like-minded people. So when you do your asana practice, when you guys sit and do pranayam, something uh, adds up, right? So the entire energy of the class is such, when you guys practice together, you feel more motivated also, right? So in that same way, he also, when he left, he was with five of his friends, right? And he was meditating, meditating, but nothing was coming out of it, right? So he saw that no matter what he is doing, he studied everything of his time and he was practicing also, right? But none of that made sense, right? In, in the regard that he was not getting free from the sufferings, right? So then he left those five friends also and went into isolation, right? And finally, when he sat for his meditation, he took the determination that I will not move unless and until I get free, right? And that is when he achieved his final goal, right? So the final goal is achieved away from everyone, right? Then he came back again, right? He first taught those five friends only, right? And then he taught thousands of people and thousands of people who practiced his technique at that point of time they got free. Why? Because the technique is not limited to a set of people. All these techniques are, you know, all of you can practice, right? So no, no person ever, no person of this uh, level ever gives a practice which can only be done by a few people. All of you can do that. You did Anapan in your meditation class, right? All of us have breath, right? So then he gave that practice. He came back. But the final point was only achieved when he isolated. And it is a very advanced stage. So right now you don't have to go running anywhere, right? Wherever you are, you guys can practice, begin your practice, and even continue your practice for a very long time existing in the society, right? A lot of people who join yoga classes, they're just saying, now we will have to leave everything. No, you can do it being where you are, right? But when you are ready to leave everything behind, you will leave it behind as naturally as you came into the practices of yoga, right? Something might have happened which would have pushed you, okay, let me do a yoga course, right? So as naturally as you came over here, joined the course, that is how naturally you will also leave behind the society, right? At that point of time, you won't think, oh, if I don't get food, oh, if I don't get shelter, right? No. You will naturally allow that thing to happen, right? So nothing should ever be forced, right? And then you will reach that final stage. But this stage is very far off, right? So for now, the challenge for us is just to keep our practices continuous, right? Every day, no matter what happens, we have to continue practicing, 
all the time right so maintaining continuity of practice is what you guys should set your goal like this should be a goal setting right after the classes end you are continuing your practice giving them ample time every day right not just doing them when the course is going on and when the course is finished you stop practicing no right so for us even reaching this goal is a very big achievement right so now we will just exist in the society i will be a teacher you guys will be students then you guys will be teachers right so but we have to continue our journey over here only we have to fulfill our responsibilities right but eventually this time will also come naturally for you right so just to wait for that don't force yourself okay so any doubts from today's session no doubts everything is clear i have one question mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. in the sadhana pada how many sutras are there ah uh, 55 oh i did not write that down yeah 55 okay in the third one 55 also 55 yes okay yeah thank you also so this is the overall structure of the text and i would say that if you guys um like after your classes if you feel like reading this it is the shortest way for you to like understand the philosophy of yoga right so you guys can take uh, like any commentary which you really like uh, i'll just name one or two for you guys right if you feel like reading okay so there is this uh, book called four chapters on freedom by bihar school of yoga okay b i h e r bihar it's a place over here in india okay so this school is situated over there so they have their own publication so the commentary on this uh, the patanjali patanjali's yoga sutras this book they have named it four chapters on freedom right now you know four chapters which four chapters and on freedom so these are going to make you free right four chapters on freedom so if you feel like it this is a good book purple uh, colored uh, what is that called the cover of the book is purple and color and then one book is called so patanjali's yoga sutras by swami vivekanand v i v e k e n a n d a if you want to uh, this the second one this is um yellow colored cover is there and um this is a little bit thin so very easy english and uh, apt commentary okay so somebody who doesn't want to go too much in detail they can just read this one uh, again good book if you guys want to go into reading this there is no compulsion we don't have this in the course like this uh, whatever concepts are given in the book we just have different topics so if you want to read the text as a whole then you guys can look into these books not necessary okay there is no compulsion right um any doubts from anyone related to anything okay keep continuing all the other practices so you can food and how you are doing each action yes i will remind you every day right so let's end today's session yeah
sit comfortably wherever you are keep the back and neck straight gently close your eyes we'll chant om one time followed by three shantis inhale deeply for om Shanti 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 join the palms together let's just bow down begin our day with a sense of gratitude for everything we have clap the palms together place them on the eyes very slowly while blinking and looking at your palms begin to open up your eyes start coming back with a smile and namaste to everyone i will see you all for your pranayam class at 3 o'clock bye bye take care enjoy your class bye bye